Good morning, Titans. Today is Wednesday, March 23rd, and you're here with your host, Joyce. Please rise for the national anthem. Good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, at the Social Justice uh, Club meeting we had last month, uh, we wanted to continue the idea of uh, Black History Month and just sort of um, share a little bit about some um, really influential people. Uh, and so I thought I'd share a little bit about M uh, Mother Mary Lang. Um, she was an African American, and she's up for canonization. There actually hasn't been um, there hasn't been any African American saints. Uh, recognized by the Catholic Church as of yet, um, but there are six on the way. There are African, uh, there are black saints, but no African American saints. Um, but anyways, Mary Mother Lang, um, she she lived in the late 1700s to mid 1800s, and uh, she was she was pretty incredible. She was um, she really wasn't treated very kindly by. Uh, first of all, she was an immigrant. Um, she was smart. She was a woman. She was black. Um, but the, the thing I like so much about her story is that she chose always to love, but she also had someone with a lot more privilege than her uh, as a close friend who advocated for her. So Mother Mary Lang, well, the reason why we call her Mother Mary Lang is because she founded a convent, um, kind of like we used to call St. Teresa of Calcutta, Mother Teresa. So they always refer to the head person in a convent as Mother Superior. So she became Mother Mary Lang. Uh, and one of the really cool stories that stuck out to me when I was listening, uh, listening to her, uh, listening about her life, um, was that there was, a, there, was, there was a pandemic. There was an outbreak of uh, cholera, cholera in, uh, when she was in the, in the 1830s, I think it was. And there were 12 nuns, right? And this, this priest that was advocating so greatly for this community of nuns, of black sisters, um, someone approached them because their hospitals were overrun and they said, we need, we need people to cure, uh, to care for the sick. And he's like, well, these nuns, they're, they're teachers, they're not nurses, I'll ask, but we'll see. And so he asked and all 12 of the nuns stood up and said, yes, we will go and help. And they only required four of them, so four of them went and none of them got sick. Uh, so God was so much, so very much with uh, everybody surrounding these nuns, and they were very blessed, and they, they really made a big impact. So I, I would encourage you to, to pray for the canonization uh, of this saint and all six of the saints that are up for canonization, uh, the African-American saints that are up. Um, and uh, I kind of wanted to lead that into, into the, the Stations of the Cross that we're going to do for today, because we know that so often there's so much discrimination that goes on even within these walls, right? And uh, as Mother Superior, uh, sorry, Mother Mary Lang, you know, we can choose to rise above it and just love despite the discrimination we face. And as the priest that advocated for these nuns, we can uh, refuse to stand by and let discrimination occur, and we can really advocate for the people that are being discriminated against, right? Just as Jesus was discriminated against as he was carrying his cross, 
So he understands the suffering that we go through, but also so does Mary. And that's what this fourth station of the cross is all about. It's about Mary and the suffering that she endured watching her son uh, carry his cross. So if you can join me, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the fourth station. Jesus meets his mother. After they had presented their son Jesus in the temple, Simeon, a just and holy man, blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many, and to be a sign that will be opposed. And a sword will pierce his own soul as well. It's from the Gospel of Luke. So as we reflect, parents are amazing most of the time. They do so much. They are there for you. And they just get on with the business of treating you as if you are all that matters in the world. It's very easy to take them for granted. So Mary, you loved Jesus with a mother's love, and your suffering on his way of the cross is unspeakable. Open our eyes to see your son as you see him, and give us the courage to share him with the world just as you did, without discrimination. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Attention grade 12 students. Anyone interested in being part of the prom planning committee are invited to attend a meeting in TLC on your lunch at 1255 today, Wednesday, March 23rd. See you then. The French Club will be meeting on Wednesday, March 23rd at the start of the grade 10 and 12 lunch in room 146. New members are always welcome. Please bring your lunch. There will be a boys soccer tryout meeting this Friday during grade 9-11 lunch in room 253. During the grade 10 lunch, 10-12 lunch, it will be in room 242. If you cannot attend, please see Mr. Sulio in room 253. Tryouts will begin next week from Monday through Thursday. Attention all girls trying out for the HT Varsity soccer team. Our first tryout is this Friday, March 25th. Please bring indoor shoes as well as cleats and prepare for indoor or outdoor weather. If you have not returned the permission forms and information sheet to Mrs. Hack, this paperwork was due before the March break to Mrs. Hack in room 223. You will not be allowed to try out without submitting this paperwork before tryouts begin. If you cannot attend the tryout, please email Mrs. Hack through Outlook or speak to her in room 223. See you Friday. Attention girls rugby players. Please meet for practice after school in the main entrance by the main office. If it is raining, we will do some indoor conditioning. Please dress accordingly. Attention Titans. If you ordered healthcare spirit wear scrubs for Mrs. Bow, they are in. You can pick them up today at both lunches in room 246. That's all for me, Titans. Have a great day.